our dice. Welcome to the Stateless Codecast. This is episode number 90 in our series, Create a Ruby Gem, Nerd Dice. And in this episode, we're going to take a page out of what we did in our nerddice.com series where you can, uh, we're doing a Ruby on Rails 7 application that is managing tabletop role playing. And uh, that's what we've been spending most of my time on in terms of uh, producing new content as of late. But anyway, in that series, we did some documentation videos. And um, after the first one, I went back and said, well, no, we need to use relative links in our readme rather than, uh, or contributing to the readme and all those intra repo links so that uh, if you're on a branch and you're working on it, it, the links within that branch will work and point to the other files on that branch instead of right now, uh, there's like the slash blob slash master potentially in some of those links and that will send you directly to the master branch on those items and that's um, may not be applicable in all cases. So we're gonna, um, for the sake of maintainability, uh, knock this out. So we've got this moved into, uh, in progress, we take a look at the, the issue here. And I have an example of the commit where I made this change on the, uh, the nerddice.com application. So you can see here in the, let's see here, probably the readme section. So yeah, uh, you can check it out in our readme. So before in the first commit iteration through this, it was, uh, I can show you what it looks like in ours. So you can see here, We've got that slash blob slash master when we're linking to burn the contributor covenant with fire. So um, looks like we might just have the one situation here to fix. Uh, the other place here is the uh, the change log, and I'm actually going to keep that as the the master branch of the change log, and I have got another item in our backlog. Go back one more uh, to uh, rework the other branches to point to the master change log. So in that case, I'm not going to keep maintaining um, kind of the legacy branches version of the change log. Instead, I'm going to say all of the changes, including those to the legacy branches, are going to be in the master change log and um, do that. And it will be consistent with what we have in our uh, gem specification, the kind of the one source of truth for a change log. So anyway, we're going to now take a look at making this change. Uh, we're currently on the master branch. We will be mission. got our new branch and in this case so we've just got the one place where we're doing that um, typically what I'll do is and it's not going to work on the editor um, the link syntax here in general and I'll just demonstrate it in case this is your first and only video with us uh, so whenever I do readme editing typically links being the exception to this rule i'll throw these into the uh a comment a draft comment for the issue and if you click the preview section here you can see that it gives you the what that's going to look like in github markdown and since we're using github here the github markdown editor preview would be the best way to go about doing that so anyway this is a um make sure that 
blob only occurs once. And in this case, it's just going to be as simple as getting rid of all of the non-relative portions of this link. And getting rid of that extra new line. And I think that's it. I don't anticipate any RuboCop or RSpec difficulties with this, and we don't have any. So we're just going to um, add and commit. I'll pause and write my message. All right, I've got a commit message here. I will close it and we will push to this branch, git push. We're gonna track, set a remote tracking branch uh, to the origin and then to this branch with the same name as what we've got locally will allow for the build to complete. So if we go to our GitHub actions, we've got that build running. I will pause and allow that time to complete. All right, our build has passed. Open up a pull request. Create it. I will. Oh, I've got the thing still set up to push and pull request. So I will pause and allow that to complete. All right, and we have a failure here on the benchmark. So we'll go into that failure. This just occasionally happens and I'm gonna see if I can just, yeah, it is a, uh, rerun the failed job, see if that solves the issue. back to green. Take a look at our pull request. All checks have passed. Ideally, then I'll just note here, it's not great to have a, um, a check that, that fails intermittently. Um, it's just the, um, the timing on that. Occasionally the, uh, the ratio doesn't, uh, quite work the same way. So, but it, eventually succeeded. So I'll go back to the command line here. And we're going to git merge. Git checkout master. Now merge it. Git push. So that will Close the pull request remotely. I will now close the issue. command line here. Actually, let's go back to the, so one of the, the neat things about the, the pull request now um, is that you can just click this delete branch button after the branch merges and um, do that, which is even quicker than 
um, doing it from the command line. And then we'll just get branch dash D to get rid of our temporary branch and we are done. Sometimes you'll take those quick wins. This is less than a 10 minute video and um, see you in the next one. Code along on an end-to-end -end journey through the creation, design, and development of a Ruby on Rails application for managing tabletop role-playing games. We start from Rails New and will guide you along the journey of the entire life cycle of the application. You'll get to see real-life, real-world problems and challenges as we try to deliver value for our users. Visit statelesscode.com to level up. Thanks for watching this Stateless Code video. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and spread the word. Check out our growing library of videos on our social media channels. Follow us at Stateless Code, and taxation is theft.